in my experience as a grade 12 teacher and a marker, I have the following advice before any exam. The first is that when preparing, your focus should always be on building from the ground level up, understanding the easy concept, being able to answer the easy questions before focusing on those level 4 questions. As the guideline document stipulates here, those level 4 questions only make up 10% of the paper and therefore should not be the sole focus of your preparation. Make sure that you can answer the simple questions first and get the easy marks before you focus on the most difficult questions in the tutorials and in the past exam papers. The most important factor to be considered in preparing for an exam paper is to go through past papers. Since there are a limited number of ways in which certain concepts can be examined, by going through past papers you are giving yourself a chance to see the different ways in which it can be examined. You're encouraged to start with the most recent exams and then work backwards until you start to see that there is actually a repetition or there are only a few or a handful of ways in which something can be examined. When it comes to marking, you're encouraged to make it as easy to mark as possible. The first way in which to do this is to start each question on a new page, highlight the question so that the marker can easily find the question that they are expected to mark. This can also be done by writing as neatly as possible and making sure that diagrams are large enough to make sure that there is never any uncertainty and the marker can always clearly see your thought patterns or reasoning process. The next most important thing that you must consider is that the question order is up to you. You are encouraged to choose to answer the questions in the order that suits you best. So in the physics paper, it is always question two, mechanics, question three, projectile motion, question four, momentum and impulse. But if you know that electrostatics is actually your strength, then start with question seven and then move on to your next strength. Rather start with the questions where you know you will get your marks and leave the most difficult questions for the end so that if you don't get to them, you are not losing guaranteed marks that you would if you left out the questions where you are confident. Important to note, the marking guidelines are very specific when it comes to writing of formulae. The first one is that mostly there will be a mark allocated for a formula, and that's why every answer should start with a formula, even if it is something as simple as just saying the net force on object A is equal to the force of B on A plus the force of C on A. So just any formula or even writing the formula for how the parallel or perpendicular component is calculated. The next thing is that if you are using a formula that is given in the formula sheet, it must be copied exactly. And when we say exactly, we mean that the formula P average is equal to F times V average you will lose the mark if you do if you write it as f times v instead of f times v average that doesn't mean that you won't get the rest of the marks but you will lose the formula mark and then another important note is that there is a mark for the formula if you attempt to make a substitution if there are other values that you've attempted to substitute so you are encouraged to even if you are uncertain about the question at least write down a suitable formula and substitute some values that you see in the question into it. Then when performing calculations, once again you must start with the formula as it is written, so you may not automatically rearrange the formula. So if the formula is given as r equals to v over i, you must write it down as, I, as r equals v over i, then substitute the values as they are given, and then write the answer. Note that you are not given a mark for showing that rearrangement, so it is not entirely necessary. The exam instructions always ask you to round to two decimal places, and you are encouraged to remember that. When it comes to any answer in physics that is not a ratio, or physics or chemistry that is not a ratio, it must have units. 
make sure that when you go through your paper at the end that every answer has units. You are also expected to know these symbols, milli means times 10 to the negative 3, etc. And then in physics, when dealing with vectors, it is very important to choose a reference direction or indicate what your reference direction is. And that can simply be done by saying take down as positive. You may choose whichever reference direction you want, but then make sure that you leave your final answer with a positive magnitude. So if you do end up with, for example, a negative velocity, you would always write that as a positive velocity in the negative reference direction. And then again, take note that when the question asks you to calculate the magnitude of a vector, it is not necessary to give direction. But if you are asked to calculate a certain vector quantity, then magnitude and direction are required.